Stanford University. Okay, uh, let's get started. Um, have everybody's attention. So we have a packed room, so it's going to be uh, crazy. It's not as large as last year. I mean, it's five times the size of last year. Um, welcome to CS193P for fall or uh, winter 2010 term. I want to start by bringing up all the people that are involved in this class. Uh, so myself and Josh Schaffer are the, uh, the professors for this class. Um, Paul and David are our TAs, and Paul Marcos, once, a, once again, is coming back to uh, run, run stuff from the back. Uh, can I get everybody up here and introduce everybody? So, Josh, you want to start? Sure. Uh, my name is Josh Schaffer. I uh, work at Apple with Al and uh, work on iPhone OS. I work on UIKit. So uh, I'll probably be answering a lot of questions about user interface level stuff and uh, working with views and that sort of thing. Cool. Uh, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Alan Canestrero. I um, taught this class last year. I built the remote application for the iPhone, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm anxious. I'm looking forward to another term of this. So, I'm gonna pass the microphone. Oh, there. right. I have, right. I've got the portable mic here. Sort of. Here, I can try that. All right. So, hello everyone. My name is uh, David Jacobs. I'm a PhD student here at Stanford. I study computer graphics. Um, I took the iPhone programming course in the spring, and it was awesome. So, I'm back. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Salzman. I'm a second year master's student here. I TA'd the course last quarter and took it the quarter before that and I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm Paul Marcos. Um, you won't see me here in lecture uh, like you'll see all these folks here, but you will see me on mailing lists. Um, I, I do a lot of the coordination, the back end stuff, uh, updating the website and, and just administrative support. Um, so you won't see my face, but you'll see my emails a lot. Great. Thanks, guys. This is your staff for the term, so be familiar with them. <laughs> I'll help you through. OK, so before we get started, I wanted to uh, just ask some questions uh, about backgrounds here. So first question is, um, how many people here have done object-oriented programming before? Virtually everybody. Hopefully everybody. I mean, uh, there's a prerequisite for the class. Um, obviously, we'll be using it fairly heavily uh, in Objective-C programming, and um, we'll get into that a little more in a minute. How about uh, how many people have developed applications for the Mac? A couple, a few. OK. How many people have installed the iPhone SDK and written apps for the iPhone? A couple, some who were in the class last term. And has anybody submitted any applications to the App Store? Yeah, a couple. Great. That's great. Um, as if you heard, so Apple announced today that um, 3 billion downloads of applications from the store. So hugely, hugely successful platform. Um, and we'll teach you how to make these apps for the next three months. Um, so a few things about the class and some of the logistics. Uh, um, for those that are already in the room, you know we're in Education 128. Um, this is where it's going to be every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon from 4.15 to 5.30 p.m. Uh, we're going to have an optional session as well on Fridays uh, where we're going to talk about all kinds of different topics. We're going to have some guest lecturers in. Um, we'll be talking about some debugging issues. We'll, that's the first one, I believe, this Friday uh, is getting set up. Is that correct? SDK yeah, S SDK uh, helping you through any problems. Um, if, you, you know, if you're new to the environment, I suggest attending. We'll, we don't know the room yet or the time. We'll find that out uh, within the week. Uh, and we will send an email to the class list. Um, I believe everybody by default will be on the class list. All the enrolled students, is that correct? Okay. Um, and then the last thing is uh, office hours, which um, we're going to also figure out this week. Uh, Paul and David will have uh, office hours each that you can go attend and uh, ask them one-on-one -on -one questions. So. Uh, requirements. So background, we, we're asking that everybody has at least um, CS106 background, which is object-oriented programming. Um, and we're not going to have a book. So just like the same as in the past, Apple's documentation is rich. It's, um, it's deep. It's got all, all the information we're going to need for this class. So um, we're going to be working off that. Uh, we may make references to books throughout the term, but you don't need any of them. Uh, required hardware and software, everybody needs an Intel Mac running uh, Leopard or Snow Leopard. That's the only environment that the um, that the SDK will run on. If you don't have one personally, uh, you know, 
find a friend or someone that, uh, that you can use time on. Uh, it won't work on the cluster computers. We can't, install, we can't install the SDK on the cluster computers, so you have to have personal time with, uh, with somebody's computer, and uh, so hopefully everybody can get that. Uh, and then for iPhone and iPod Touch, for device hardware, you don't need to own one of those either. What we're going to do is um, all of the assignments can be done in the iPhone simulator. Uh, and we're, gonna, we're trying to set it up so that we can get loaner touches. I might even already be worked out. But um, you know, if you don't have a device, we can get you one. Excuse me. All right, so enrollment in the class. So um, we have more than 60 students in the class today. So not all of you will, un unfortunately not all of you will be able to actually be enrolled in the class. Um, we have 60 spots, and I believe it's the same as last year. We have 40 um, credit spots and 20 uh, pass no credit spots. So um, what we're going to do is ask everybody to fill out a survey. Um, this is the URL. We're going to post these slides. And then you can click on that, or you should write it down if you. Uh, it's pretty easy. Tiny URL: cs193p-2010. That'll get you to the survey. Um, you need to fill it out by tomorrow. Um, we're going to make our decisions this week as to who gets in. And um, if you're interested in taking pass no credit, please put that in your form. That'll help us fill the spots. Um, but we're going to determine who gets in based on your past experience. Uh, you know, classes that you've already taken, um, and including the number of, you know, we're going to look at the number of quarters in your major. If, you, if you're close to finishing the, your school, um, we'll consider that as well. So, um, and auditors are welcome. So if you, um, if you don't get into the class, uh, or if you just want to sit in on the class, uh, we encourage you to come and join us. Uh, I don't expect it to be, even this isn't so bad, a few floor spots, not so bad, but we'll, uh, you know, always room for people to, to learn this stuff. So, I can go back here. Um, the iPhone Developer University program. So, in order to get develop, you know, to get started with developing, you're going to need um, a certificate, and you're, you're going to need to download the SDK. Um, I, Stanford is part of the uh, iPhone Developer University program, and what that means is they've already signed up basically for all of you uh, to the SDK. Uh, you're going to need to go through, we'll invite you to the team. Once we determine who's enrolled, we'll invite you to, to the team. And then you'll have to go through and click on the, uh, the, the uh, NDA, the uh, agreement, basically, um, to get you in, but you're already enrolled. So don't go in and, you know, if you get in, don't go apply for this on your own. Uh, Stanford's already done this, but when you get an invite, you're in. Uh, and the lectures and the materials are all going to be available on iTunes U. So what that means is uh, last year we had, I don't even know what the final tally was, but millions of downloads of this class. Um, Evan Dahl, who's here today, was the number one iTunes U download for the last nine months. So uh, uh, anyway, it's hugely successful, hugely popular. But we're going to make all of these uh, lectures available online, so the video and uh, the slides as well. Now, what does that mean for you? Well, if you're an enrolled student or if you're somebody that attends the class, um, we may record you. you. Your voice might be recorded if you're asking questions, uh, so be aware of that. Um, posting the videos online, if you're enrolled in the class, it's not a substitute for uh, attending. We still strongly recommend you attend. And the main reason is, I mean, one of the main reasons is that um, the lectures don't always get up the same day. I mean, oftentimes it's a day later, and sometimes it's more. So if you, um, you, know, if you need to know something from a lesson in one of the assignments, uh, you may not get that information on time, um, so please come to the classes. And uh, for viewers on iTunes U, what this means for you is, well, welcome to Stanford. Um, we welcome your suggestions and your feedback on the class. Always looking to make this better. And, uh, but unfortunately, we can't always answer your emails. So if you're, we get a lot of emails from people asking, um, you know, hey, I, I have problems with this SDK you know, function, and I don't know how to do it. Can you help me? And we can't, unfortunately. And we'll, we'll point you to some resources in a couple slides on um, where to get more information. But we, unfortunately, we can't answer individual emails for others, pe people that aren't enrolled in the class. Um, and the last thing I really want to make notice of, which is we've really hit in the last couple weeks, is if you're, this is 
you know, present Alan telling future you, if you uh, want the materials from the class, download them now, uh, especially if this is after March of 2010. We reuse the materials from term to term, to term some of the materials. Um, so we take them down before the following term. Uh, so if this is April and the materials are still up, you're lucky, go get them. And um, yeah, you never have to worry about us taking them away from you. Uh, okay, so a few information, uh, you know, a few pieces of information about how to get in touch with us and how to where to find resources. Uh, email so cs193p at stanford.edu. Um, I don't even think you need the CS, right? You do need the CS. Okay, sorry. C, um, cs193p at cs.stanford.edu is our staff list. Uh, that'll get you in touch with um, well all of us that you were introduced to at the beginning of the class. Um, and again, questions from enrolled students, please. Uh, the class website, cs193p.stanford.edu. And we will post up there um, links to material. Uh, we'll post up there uh, information about the class. Uh, so check there frequently. And that's your first point of contact. Yeah? Would it be available before the lecture? If we're really lucky, maybe, but um, in general, it'll be in general, it'll be as soon as the lecture is done. We'll get that stuff up for you. So, um, other websites to look at. So the first one is the Apple Developer Center, uh, developer.apple.com. Uh, the Apple Dev forums actually are very useful for asking technical questions. If you have um, if you have questions about the SDK, if you have questions about certain functions, um, this should be your first place to go to. Because uh, what you have on there is, you know, several, I don't know, 100,000 developers asking the similar questions. Your question may already be answered. And if it's not, you can post. And there's even Apple engineers up there answering questions. So um, go there for technical help, and um, you'll get all your questions answered. Uh, and external resources, there have been, a, uh, since we hosted the, the class last term, uh, a couple of third-party sites have gone up. And I want to point you to them now. Um, because especially for auditors, this would be a great place to go to to participate in the community of people that are following along outside of this class. Uh, the first is cs193p.com. Um, I don't know what state that's in right now, um, but it, it's still up and there's still a forum going on there. And there's also the Google group called iPhone App Dev Auditors. So uh, check those out. Uh, another little piece of information here for uh, auditors, for those that are not enrolled in the class. Again, for those enrolled in the class, we're going to get you on the class list. Uh, if you're not, if you don't get enrolled or you're watching at home, um, there's a self-add email list that you can add yourself to where we will post, um, you know, infrequent announcements or, or things that we want to communicate. Um, so go to list, lists.stanford.edu. Um, which will eventually get you to CS 193P auditors, and that's the list name. So, so why are we here? Uh, well, we're all here to build apps for these two devices, the uh, iPhone and the iPod Touch. Uh, both, again, hugely successful, 3 billion application downloads. I don't even know how many applications in the store, upwards of 100,000. Um, so you want to take a piece of this pie. You want to, you know, be a part of this. It's a it's a growing phenomenon. It's a um, you know it's, it's something of our our age that that's going to be that's huge. And uh, it, if you're interested in computer programming, you're interested in engineering, uh, this is an exciting place to get involved. Um, so a few things about the class. Well, you know CS one ninety three P is not just about development on this platform. We're going to teach some fundamental concepts that you're going to take with you. Uh, to other appli you know, when you develop application on other platforms as well. Not that any of them are any good compared to this one, but um, no, no. The the uh, so we're going to teach some some you know design patterns that will be useful to you everywhere. And so we want to make sure that um, we're talking about the theory of application development. Um, and it's going to it's going to take you to you're going to see things that you might not see in other classes. Again, we're not getting into the um, this is an application development class. We're not going to get into the theory of database. Design. We're not going to get into the theory of, uh, you know, graphic, oh, you know, th 3D graphics, stuff like that. But you're going to see things about how to build applications um, using patterns that make sense. So a little bit about the SDK and Coco. It's 20 years old. All right. It, it started at Next. It's 24 years, 23 years old now. Um, 
It started with Next. Uh, it's a very rich SDK, very deep, all kinds of tools available. Um, it's very high level as well, so it's, it's really easy to make something, your standard iPhone application that has you know, table view and, and things that you can select and text, um, it's, it's a lot less code than you might think it would be, and we'll get into that um, over the next couple weeks. But um, the, the frameworks and the tools that are provided to you as a developer are very high level. Um, we're going to show you know, real world implementations of object oriented design. If you've ever heard of uh, patterns like uh, model view controller, uh, that's one we're going to explore in depth, uh, and there'll be others. And um, if you're interested in OS X development, a lot, of the, a lot of these things will translate right over from the iPhone. So a few things that we'll cover. Well, the first is the tools available to you. So Xcode is the development environment, um, and it's an editor as well. And it's, your, it's what you're going to do a lot of your work in and compile your applications. Uh, and then there's Interface Builder, which is a graphical tool for building your UI. Uh, we'll, we'll show you both of those. We'll talk about a couple of major frameworks on the OS that'll be useful. The um, foundation framework, which is uh, your strings and arrays and classes that you'll use throughout. Uh, and then the UI kit framework, which is the interface framework um, for the iPhone, uh, iPhone SDK. Uh, and that's what provides to you things like buttons and sliders and things that give you a standard look across all applications. Um, and we'll teach you Objective-C. So Objective-C is, um, this is the language that's been around for a long time. It's a, it's a um, strict superset of C. Anything you write in C will compile and run in, in Objective-C. Uh, and it adds other, uh, other extensions to it that you'll find useful, what we'll teach. Uh, so why Objective-C? Well, um, whether or not you're interested in iPhone development in the long term, it's always great to see how languages uh, solve problems or um, expose syntax, right? It's great to get variety. Whether you're doing Java, C++, so I strongly encourage you to explore some different languages to, to see how things are done. Um, it's, uh, it's based on ANSI C. So like I said, this is a, a superset of uh, C. And uh, it's something to compare to the other languages that you've learned in other classes. So. Well, I want to talk about the assignments and the grading. So particularly those enrolled in the class will be interested in this. Um, so there's going to be seven weekly assignments. And um, the final project will be a, a project of your choosing. You decide what your application is going to be, whether you want to make a uh, flashlight app or a, uh, uh, a Twitter app. or Well, not Twitter app, because the, there's already stuff up there. But, um, there's, uh, it's going to be your choice. You know, games, games are very popular. So start thinking about what you want to do. If you have an idea, you might even want to start sketching it out as we go through the class um, to see how the pieces you learn will fit together with that. Uh, the grading is going to be simple. You may be exposed to this already, which is the check, check plus, and check minus. Um, and we have, uh, like all other Stanford classes, you have three late days that you can use. Uh, once you use up three late days, you don't get any more late days. We start deducting marks. Uh, so use them wisely. If you've got them towards the end of the class, use them if you want to. Um, but you only get three. So applications you're going to build over the course of the, um, of the class. The first is um, Hello Stanford, which is very, very simple. Uh, primary goal of this first assignment is going to be to teach you. And, and it's, we're going to start with that this week is to get you introduced to the SDK. Um, make sure that you can install it, make sure that you can run it, and build a very simple application. Uh, the second one, which we're, we may, we're still discussing, is Hello Poly, uh, which is a two-week assignment that'll get you into some basic drawing, uh, basic application development. Uh, the third one, here's where we start to get a little more interesting. Um, last year, we did a Twitter application called Presence, uh, which taught students how to um, how to build a Twitter client, and there's a ton on the store, um, but it's a you know, real-world client that people got to build. This year, we're going to get into a different API set for Flickr, um, and we're going to teach you how to build um, a location-based application for fetching photos and seeing, you know, finding photos on the net that are close to where you are. Um, so this should be pretty interesting. And then again, the final project, three weeks long. It's your project. You could do whatever you want. Um, we will be asking for proposals so we can review whether or not it's you know, way too hard or way too easy. 
I already got into this, but the, the takeaway on this slide is we're going to, we want to make sure that you can get the SDK installed for the first assignment. Um, and we're going to get you involved in compiling and building a basic application. Um, <coughs> please try and do this before the next lecture. We'll figure out when our, um, when our Friday lecture is, but that would be the, a great place to take questions if you have any. Uh, and it's due next Wednesday, so um, you're going to have to get started on it pretty soon. Yeah? Are these individual assignments? question is, are these individual assignments? Uh, yes. Everything up until the final project is an individual assignment. What about the final? final project, we're going to let you do in teams if you want to. Uh, teams of two. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, question is, is the, does the team member have to be taking this class? And um, there are... I th yeah, we'll think about that. Well, there's other relevant classes that, well, we can talk about that. We'll, we'll talk about that. And, and maybe on a case-by-case -case basis is the way to think about that. Uh, so the second, well, the third project we're going to do, again, is uh, Paparazzi. Uh, you're going to build a, f a fully functional application in four weeks. We're going to explore all kinds of different concepts, uh, including fetching photos from Flickr. Um, each assignment, so from one week to the next, asks you to add another piece to it. So don't fall behind on these. You only get three late days, so if you fall more than a week behind, you're you know, getting marks deducted anyway. But um, stay on top of this. This is gonna be, it's gonna be fun, actually. And it'll cover all kinds of things, including all of these items. So we're gonna show you, you know, how to design an application. We're gonna talk about view controllers. Uh, we'll talk about presenting data and loading data. We're gonna introduce you to core data, which is uh, a database framework on the iPhone and the Mac. Um, all these other pieces of information and the uh, some iPhone 3.0 stuff, um, and this is stuff we didn't talk about last term, obviously. But we'll sh we'll talk about MapKit integration, so how to how to bring maps into your application, uh, and then some of the video and photo input and um, access APIs. And then the final project, uh, once again, you'll have three weeks to do it. Uh, we're saying right now it's one or two people teams. Um, if you really, you know, we can, we can talk about it on a case-by-case -case basis if there's other things you want to uh, do, but you're going to have to propose your idea to us. Um, so any kinds of topics are fine. You know, student life apps, there was a, the iStanford app came out of this class a couple years ago. Um, games, games were really popular last term. Uh, social, location-aware software, that's very popular on the phone. Uh, you know, think about this is a little portable computing device in your hand, so what kinds of things would be useful to you? Uh, and then that's, that's usually a good starting point for what you want to build. Uh, and then if you want, you can post it on the store. And people have done this before from previous classes. Here's a URL. I think this is from two years ago. There may not be any apps on there from last year. Um, but uh, StanfordiPhoneClassApps.com, there's a half dozen at least applications that people from the classes have made and posted. So check them out. Uh, so before I move on, any questions on the structure of the class, the, you know, what we're going to cover? Yeah. And just when exactly did we find out whether we got it? Uh, so we're going to, Paul, do you want to answer that? So we'll, we want the surveys back tomorrow afternoon. We'll go through them as quickly as possible, hopefully by the end of the week, um, maybe into the weekend. Uh, and we will, if, if you already have signed up in Access, and you are not admitted to the class, we'll ask you to drop the class. And then for anybody that is admitted and not signed up, you, you need to go into Access and enroll. So en enrollment in Access does not guarantee a spot in the class. You have to fill out the survey. So the re to repeat that for the camera, um, you're not automatically in the class if you've enrolled. You have to fill out the form by tomorrow. Um, and we will tell you by the end of the week whether you're in or not. And if you're not in, you have to drop the class. Does that cover it? Yes. Are you going to have a waiting list of some sort in case people drop? Uh, question is, are we going to have a waiting list? Yes, we will have a waiting list. Yeah? Um, under the license that you get for this class, if we get in, then can we, if we've written other apps, can we publish apps through that license? Uh, the question is, if can you publish apps through the license you get from this class? And the answer is no. So this... I don't believe so, right? Yeah, so the license is strictly for development while you're under Stanford. Um, if you want to do something on your own, uh, you can sign up and it's $99 to get a, to get a developer license. And, and more so. specifically, it's, it's for development on the device 
sacrifice while you are enrolled in this class. Right. So it's the license you get from this class is only for development on the device while you're enrolled in this class. So after March, it all gets shut down. So your certificates expire. So any other questions? So let's get started. Material, yeah. What you do belongs to you. The uh, question is, does what you make in this class belong to you? And yes, it does. So go and post this and make a million dollars uh, off of your class project. I encourage it. Just remember us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we'll take commission off the sides. Um, OK, so let's get started on um, iPhone OS. All right, so this is an iPhone, if you've never seen one. Um, the iPhone is a phone, it's an iPod, and it's a portable communications device, I believe, is how we pitched it. Um, what's under the hood in the iPhone is a lot of the same pieces that's in the, that's in the Mac. So what you have is you have a desktop, you know, powerful platform in a phone. Um, so much so that all of the different components of the Mac OS, so the core OS, the services, media playback and drawing and audio and Coco is taken from the Mac OS, moved into the phone, and slightly modified at the UI level so that it can handle input gestures that are customized to touch. So everything's there, full OS. So let's look at some of the different pieces and just talk about what's inside. Core OS is um, low level, uh, nitty gritty, functionality um, for how you run a computer. There's you know, the Unix BSD, um, Mach 3, the kernel, uh, Bonjour for discovery and um, advertising of services. Uh, there are several different pieces in here that are available at the lowest level of the operating system. The level above that, core services, includes things like uh, networking, um, you know, address book preferences, things that are um, a little more Mac-centric, uh, and set up the environment that your applications will talk to uh, through the system. Uh, above that, there's all kinds of media, fr media frameworks. So there's uh, frameworks for doing audio playback, audio recording. There's frameworks for doing uh, drawings of all kinds of different types. Um, and there's you know, video playback and photo taking and stuff like that. Uh, and that's, that all builds on top of the core services below. And up at the top level, this is the, uh, the UI kit framework, essentially, uh, which is, and, and several other frameworks, but this is uh, the pieces that allow you to do a touch interactive UI on the device. So that's it. That's the phone. Uh, these are the different pieces. We saw this slide earlier. So the way you develop for this environment is with the Xcode and Interface Builder tools. Uh, there's another tool which we may get into on Friday lectures, which are uh, the instruments, which are for profiling and performance, uh, performance and memory profiling. Uh, the frameworks we're going to use primarily in this class are Foundation and UIKit. Now, Foundation um, provides all of the you know, data structures and uh, things like arrays and um, uh, I don't know, different kinds of object types, strings, stuff like that. Um, that you'll use throughout your application. And again, the UI kit stuff are the pieces uh, like the buttons and the sliders, the controls, um, you know, views, all the, all the things that you interact with or view on the device. Um, and Objective-C is how it all runs. So here's a look at those two frameworks. Um, your user interface elements, your hardware APIs, all that stuff lives in UI kit. And down at the foundation level, it's a subset of the foundation framework on the Mac. Um, but has a lot of a lot of different classes that you'll use. Uh, so a, st a step back again. I think everybody has object-oriented programming, but if I can just do a quick overview of some fundamental concepts here. Uh, here's an example of an object. Um, this is, I believe, this is UML form. If anybody's interested, uh, but in this case, we have a class called Thing, which is an object, um, and this class Thing has a behavior in this case named do something. Um, and you, um, objects can point to it, we'll talk about target action in a second, can point to it and can call the do something method on an object that you've instantiated. Now this thing also has two different pieces of state. All right, in this case, 
um, it has flag and count. And state can include uh, things like integers and strings and uh, more complex data types, arrays, dictionaries, that kind of stuff. Um, but this is an object, right? So the, the, the important thing here is that an object encapsulates state and behavior into a class. So if we add another behavior here, here's you know, an example of implementing a second function called do something else. And, he, and your thing subclass can then have another state object called helper. Um, here's an example of how they point to each other. So if, I've, if I want to instantiate two different classes, one's called thing, the other one's called other thing, one object as part of its state can point to the second object. You, um, you're going to have a whole bunch of objects. So as you're creating your applications, uh, each class is going to be uh, different than, an, than every other class and separate in terms of uh, the kinds of, um, kinds of tasks that they will perform. All right, so what I wanted to show you next was, um, this is where we're going to start getting into, into Interface Builder, um, which is how objects can talk to UI elements on the screen. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to uh, show a demo of this in a few moments. But um, here's an object I have. The class is controller. It has two different pieces of state. One is a slider and one is a label. And um, these are two different elements from the, the UI kit framework that we're going to take a look at. Um, the slider points to an actual slider on your screen. And the label points to a label on your screen. Um, now, that object, by having those pointers, can then manipulate those UI elements. Um, similarly, a, um, a UI element, a control, has something called target and action that you can set. And that allows a control to be able to call a specific function when a value changes or when a certain action happens on a certain object. And you actually, uh, you actually draw arrows from object to UI element in Interface Builder. And we'll show that. So um, in this case, so we've got a slider here. And the example that I'm going to show you is as you move this slider around, we actually want, we want this value to change. So we're going to tell our slider on the UI to call the update label method on our controller object. Um, and it's really easy to do. So here we get into the demo. We're actually going to start from scratch with this. And I'm going to show you how to do this with, I think it's one line of code, which is pretty amazing. Or I was amazed when I was first introduced to this. Nowadays, it may just be standard development practice. But um, I'm going to start with a new project here. And I'm going to create a window-based application. I'm in Xcode, by the way, uh, which is generally your starting point for this stuff. So I'm going to create a window-based application. And look, I still have my old one there. We're going to call it Slida2, just to prove that it's fresh. <laughs> All right, so if I just run what it creates for me, um, Xcode's done the work of creating an application template for us. Um, so I, if I run it, we're actually going to see um, an app show up. There's not going to be in, anything in the app, uh, but it really is a, a fully functional, bare bones application uh, with just a white window. That's our application. Um, now, the way these things are structured, so you have, if we look at our Xcode uh, structure here, we've got uh, a bunch of different things on the left side. This is groups and files. Let me hide this and hide this. So um, when I open the project file, what we see inside is this is the top level of the project. There's a, there are a bunch of folders. They don't correspond to folders on disk. They're groupings that you can set up in your project uh, with different classes in them. Uh, each class has a .h and a .m. Uh, .h is your header file for the class. You should be familiar with this from C programming. Uh, .m is the extension for Objective-C compiled uh, classes. Um, and we'll look inside of this in a moment. There are you know, a few other sections here. There's um, pointers to resources. Resources are things like a nib, which I'll show you in a moment, which is the interface builder file. Uh, plist, which is you know, XML of data. There's a pointer to frameworks. And inside, your application has to link against things like UI kit, um, foundation, in this case, core graphics. So we've got them all grouped in, in, the, in Xcode in this project for um, access. Products, targets, these are the, the things you actually build. So we're building the Slida2 application. Um, 
executables. There's even search results in here. Um, SEM. Uh, Xcode is pretty, pretty full featured as far as in development of our environments go. You can actually, if you're doing source control, you can actually check out and check in directly from here. Excuse me. So uh, let's take a look at the the nib. And again, if I when I run the application, we see a blank white screen. So when I open the main window.xib file, which basically stands for XML interface builder file, um, here we have here we have our main window. Uh, there's files owner. I won't get into the details of these this week. Uh, this is our app delegate object, which you'll see, which gets created for you automatically. And here's our window. So let me move this aside. This is the same blank white screen we saw when we launched that application. Uh, now I can go to the library here and I can add things to that. So I'm going to scroll down. You'll see uh, there's different kinds of controllers. And if you don't know what model view controller is, don't worry, we'll get to that. Um, there's different kinds of uh, UI objects here. So here's a table view if I wanted to pull one in. Should look pretty familiar. Um, here's, a, here's a map view, which allows you to do uh, to embed maps in your application. What we're going to take are the slider. You'll notice segment and controls, switches. We're going to take a slider. And we're going to drag this in. Um, and we can use Interface Builder has, uh, has these guides to help you line up your interface elements. And uh, you've probably seen applications that are pretty uh, rough looking. Things just don't feel right. They're all, you know, stuff's all over the place. Interface Builder will help you line up these elements by telling you where the snap points are. So there's a snap point there. Uh, what I'm going to do, so what we're going to do with this app is we're going to uh, just make it so that when you move the slider, uh, the value that you see is going to change. So I'm going to put this label off to the right side here. Uh, and I'm going to make this wider so that it snaps to the recommended width for the label. Let's line that up in the center. Um, okay, And that's what we're going to look like. Let's just run that so you see. So all I did was visually drop those elements in, and I hit Run. And now we have a slider and a label that reads Label. Let's go and configure these things. So let's take the slider, and we're going to go to um, Info, so Inspector. And we're going to tell this slider that it has a minimum value of 0, it has an initial value of 0, and let's say it has a maximum value of 100. Okay. And we're going to tell our label that it should also have uh, an initial string that's, called, that's just 0. All right. And if I ran that, that's what you're going to see. Um, what we're going to add now is a controller object that's going to interpret the events that come from the slider and tell the label to update its text. So I'm going to start with an object. I'm going to drag it in. All right. We're going to um, go inspect that object. There's, no, there's really no properties on it right now. We're going to give it a class name. We're going to call this my controller. Okay. Now, if you remember from the previous slides, there's um, actions and outlets. The outlets point to UI elements, and the actions are things that the UI elements will call when you perform uh, value changes or other actions. So I'm going to create two outlets. One is a slider, and this is of type UI slider. You'll get to know these. There it is. And we're going to create a label, UI label. Didn't take that UI slider. All right, and we're going to create a new action called um, change label text. Okay. Um, and now we hook them up. So here we've got this, you know, my controller, which now has again two two outlets. I'm going to hold down the control key on the Mac, and I'm only going to all I'm going to do is click and drag from the object that has the outlets to the outlets themselves, and it'll snap and it'll tell you where it thinks it should go, uh, because I have the type set. Um, right when I let go, since this is a slider object, 
it knows that the only possible outlet you can actually hook it up to is slider, so we're going to hook that up. Now I'm going to control click on this again and I'm going to hook up the label. And there's the label. Um, and now what I want to do is when that slider changes, I want the slider to inform my controller that it should update the label. So we're going to control click on the slider, drag to my controller, and there's one action there which is called change label text. So we click on that, and now everything's hooked up. So again, this is no code, um, but we have to generate the code. So you, you won't always be creating your objects in Interface Builder. Most of the time you'll be creating them in Xcode, um, but here's a convenience method when you're doing a lot of UI stuff. So we built this object in Interface Builder. Now I'm going to tell it that I want it to write the class files. So my controller, I'm going to put it in my slide 2 folder. So I hit save. Uh, and there was a checkbox there to say create the .h file, which it does automatically. Yes, I want to include it in my application. Um, and now I come back to Xcode. And here are my controller.m and .h. Um, so let's run this and see what it looks like. Oh, two errors. Oh, right. So let's look at our .h file. Um, you need to specify what this is a subclass of. And my controller right now is a subclass of nothing, so I need to make it a subclass of NS object, which is the base object in foundation. And now if I run this and I launch, well, our sliders are there, but nothing happens, right? We haven't written the code yet to tell the slider to uh, change the value of the text. So let's kill that. Um, now I'm going to um, change this function. So You'll learn all these, but basically I'm going to create an integer here, which is the slider value, and I'm going to assign it to slider.value. Um, and of course, we have a slider here because it's one of our outlets. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to change my label.text to be a string. A string, string with format. Don't worry about the specifics here. We'll learn more about NS string later in the term. And this is standard C formatting. We have an integer, so I'm going to do percent %d, and then I'm going to say uh, slider value, value. It tries to autocomplete for you. Uh, now I run it, and that's it. So the slider here is sending events to this controller object, which is getting the value and then setting the label uh, that we have the outlet to. So that's it for my demo. Um, the ass first assignment isn't much more complex than this. It really, the purpose is to get you started and installed with these tools. Um, so we'll, um, that's the first thing. Uh, let's pull up my slides again. All right, so a little recap of what we had, right? Our controller object is pointing to the slider and the label. Um, our target action was pointing back from the slider to the controller, and this is your primary interface builder way of hooking things up. And that's, that's it. That's all I have for today. Um, are there any questions about either the material that you, I just showed you or the class in general before we head off? Yeah. Interface Builder there, can that only be done through Interface Builder, or is there also a way to code that? So with Interface Builder, we generated those code files. You can generate those yourself. You can write those so yourself. Those yeah. In fact, one of the things you can do, um, I'll show you really quick because we have a little bit of time. Um, if I go and modify those files, uh, Interface Builder will actually find them. So there's a key here called IB Outlet, which is an identifier that tells Interface Builder that it should recognize it. So if I create a new one, I'm going to copy and paste, and I'm going to say another, um, I don't know, let's just make it another label. And we'll say it's label 2. Right. All I'm doing is I just saved the .h file. Now when I go back to Interface Builder and click on my controller, and I go to our inspector, you'll see the label 2 controller, the label 2 outlet is there as well. So you can create these things in Xcode, you can create these things in Interface Builder the same. Yeah. Where is the user interface assigned? Where's the user interface? Is there any code that corresponds to that? 
Um, well, so that's what UIKit defines for you. So the question is, where is the user interface defined? Well, all of the code that draws the slider, that interprets touch events uh, or mouse events in the simulator case, converts those into values, all that stuff is under the hood for you. So these classes, if you use these things like UI slider, UI label, uh, you know, UI switch, that code's all written for you. And that's, that's the power of these high-level frameworks. So. so you're not allowed to tamper with that? The question is, can you tamper with those? Um, you can subclass some of these things, right? So, and if you subclass UI slider, you may want to change the behavior, change the curve, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But if, were you guys asking whether there was code generated for doing the user interface layout? Yeah. In a way. So, I mean, maybe you can yeah, talk a little bit sure. about the archiving in the name cloud. Um, oh, right. So, the question is, um, you know, are we, is the code that's generated, the code that's created for uh, Interface Builder for setting up these views, is that actually generated and compiled into your app? And um, the, you can correct me on this because I'm not completely clear on it. And we actually get into it in the next lecture. But the Interface Builder files, they actually go into your application bundle. So an application um, is a set of files and it includes the compiled code and it includes the resources that go in that. One of the resources is this nib file. Um, then at runtime, when you load one of these things, code is generated at runtime to build the, these views. Um, or they're not generated at runtime. OK. The, the objects are just unarchived. Sorry, the our objects are unarchived. So if you have a UI slider in there, it gets um, created for you at runtime, right? So um, yeah, we'll get into some of this a little, a little more in the next class, I believe. So. Um, any other questions? No. OK, so fill out your forms. Um, they're due tomorrow at noon, I believe we said. Uh, so please get them in. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.